We've got economic downturn looming in the future. We have a loss of jobs. We have increased economic insecurity. What does that mean for anxiety? And there's a really big risk that we could be looking at increased rates of mental health problems in the future. Hi, I'm Professor Marie Thiessen. Welcome to my masterclass. Today, I'm going to be speaking to you about mental health and COVID. So COVID and mental health has been in the media quite a lot. And I think it's something that really is starting to concern people. So while we've been doing the physical distancing, at the same time, we've been experiencing higher levels of anxiety and stress. And myself, like everyone in the community, we've really been experiencing higher levels of nervousness. We're fearful about the future. I'm fearful about what's going to happen in the, in the future. I have many people coming and talking to me about um, their jobs, their security and their life. So some of the big things about COVID and mental health is that fear, that fear of the virus. The other really interesting thing and really challenging thing for our mental health when we talk about COVID is that in order to defeat the virus, we've had to socially distance. But that's also meant that we've had to increase our levels of isolation. And humans are actually very social beings. And by increasing our social isolation, that leaves us very vulnerable to anxiety and depression in the future. So the second really big concern for me around COVID and mental health is that social isolation. And the last piece in the puzzle for me with mental health and COVID is what it means for our mental health in the long term. We've got economic downturn looming in the future. We have a loss of jobs. We have increased economic insecurity. What does that mean for anxiety? And there's a really big risk that we could be looking at increased rates of mental health problems in the future. So they're the things that are really concerning me about COVID and mental health. I just want to share with you now a little bit of the data about what's happening in the Australian community. So we've been able to very rapidly survey uh, the Australian community to ask them how they're feeling during this time. And unsurprisingly, from what I just said to you, there are actually very high rates of anxiety in the community. So in terms of feeling some of the indicators for anxiety, one of the indicators is how restless and how um, fidgety people feel. And around two in five Australians now are reporting that in the last month, a lot of the time they were feeling, or at least some of the time they were feeling fidgety and restless. Another indicator is how nervous you feel. And again, one in three Australians are now telling us that they feel quite nervous um, and that's quite nervous at least some of the time in the last month. And when we look at the gender differences, women versus men, at the moment it is actually women who are telling us um, that they're having feelings of more likely to be anxious and nervous. And that also um, replicates some of the findings that are happening in uh, the UK where we're seeing those people with with significant child caring responsibilities and those who are younger actually having the greatest mental health in impacts of COVID. So they're pretty high, those rates, but are they increasing? Are they any different in the time of COVID compared to previously? Well, almost twice as many Australians are feeling nervous or restless compared to the last uh, a measure that we did two to three years ago. So actually, yes, anxiety is increasing. And when you think about that in terms of numbers, if we talk about that first indicator that I was talking about, which was restless or fidgety, if you take 100 people, then in the time of COVID, it's 42 people. It's all those coloured people that are up there and now feeling that symptom. Prior to COVID, it was just the yellow. It was 24 people in terms of feeling nervous. In the time of COVID, out of 100 people, 35 people are telling us that they're feeling nervous. 
Prior to COVID, that was more like 15 people. So we're really seeing significant increases in anxiety levels. So why does that matter? Won't we all just get over it? Well, the big problem is that one worry can lead to a cascading effect and it can lead to cascading chains of worries. And that seems to snowball and lead to us feeling more anxiety. The good thing is that there are things that we can do about that. And some of the exciting work that we've been doing at the Matilda, work, at Matilda Centre with colleagues around the world is working in prevention models. How can we work with young people, use digital storyboards and storylines to work with them, to give them the skills that can protect them against these types of anxiety and um, problems in youth and then going on? And we've done six trials and over 160 schools and 14,000 kids. And we've worked with kids to develop these fun programs. And our hope is that we'll actually be able to get them to every, every student in Australia and then as many students as we can around the world so that we can give people the skills to deal with this anxiety, particularly in time of COVID. The other thing um, that you can do right now is that there actually are some really great evidence-based ways of coping with the anxiety that's being raised by COVID. And so there's, you can think about them in terms of really nine practical tips or practical skills that you can implement right now. So the first one is really to acknowledge how you're feeling. So as I did at the beginning of the presentation, and as we all should do, acknowledge how this is actually affecting you. And it's all right to feel a little bit overwhelmed sometimes, and it's actually fine to have a cry if you're really feeling the intensity of the emotions. The next really important tip um, to come from the evidence is to connect with others. So I talked about the importance of physical distancing, and that is incredibly important to defeat the virus, but equally so, we must make sure that we socially connect with each other. Find new and innovative and exciting ways, play online trivia, um, check in with each other, make sure every day is are you okay day so that we're checking in with each other and making sure we keep that social cohesion. Another incredibly important tip and one that I have to remind myself about all the time is um, making sure we um, find alternatives and making sure that we actively engage in coping. So we're very good at avoiding problems and a big one at the moment for avoiding problems is people actually using alcohol. So we're seeing some increasing rates of use of alcohol and alcohol is not a very good way to deal with your anxiety. So what could be some alternatives? What's some active ways of coping? Well, getting out, being physically active, again, making sure that you interact with people, make every day, are you okay day again, as an example, or get out and find fun or fun ways and fun alternatives. As people in the middle of COVID, you will also find that the news is 24 seven, that you're bombarded by information that you're getting it from all different sources. So another very important strategy is to switch off sometimes. It's okay not to turn your computer on when you first wake up in the morning. It's okay to give yourself a walk rather than the first thing you do is get onto social media and look at what's happening. So switching off sometimes and giving ourselves permission to do that is a really powerful way of reducing the anxiety that COVID can find. And, and produce. And finally, the most important one is remembering to reach out. There are incredible resources we've developed and Australians in particular have developed incredible digital resources. Telehealth is now available to us. If you are finding things are overwhelming for you, then the most important thing to do is to reach out. And that's an incredible way to respond to mental health and COVID. All of these tips are available. They're all available on um, our website. The University of Sydney is making these sorts of resources available to people. And as I said, if you want more information, reach out on Twitter or reach out to our centre. Thank you.